as it says, I'm Kevin Berlin. I'm from the uh, HP Workstation Lab in Fort Collins, Colorado. As you can tell, I'm a third generation Coloradan. Uh, and I will try to speak uh, slowly and intelligibly to make up for the accent. If I go too fast, do slow me down. So we are going to talk today about the libcurl, which is an open source uh, network transfer library. Uh, and it's a way to do all sorts of uh, advanced network transfers starting with HTTP. And you can embed all of that uh, in UFI starting today. Uh, I'll go over uh, the few uh, network transfer capabilities uh, that are available in UFI today. Describe curl and libcurl. Talk about the port uh, that we did to UFI that we're making available to everyone today. Uh, and I'll give you some examples uh, uh, on uh, how to write your first uh, curl enabled application. Uh, give you the URL for the source code which is now available and then I'll take questions. So what we have today in UFI, they're uh, very simple transfers and they're uh, mostly intended to talk to a Pixie server to download an OS and, uh, and do a network based uh, uh, install uh, or, or run the actual OS from the, uh, from the uh, server. Uh, they're simple transfers. They're not intended to go through many hops. They're definitely not intended to go outside your company's firewall. Um, and they know nothing about uh, uh, proxies, redirection, tunneling, or anything uh, fancy like that. If all you're doing is pixie booting, that's fine. If you have a client system and you're, say, trying to reach back to your uh, manufacturer's support organization, uh, this is not going to cut it, and you really want something uh, that can cross firewalls and so on. And really, HTTP is the perfect answer for that problem. We have that problem at HP, and uh, uh, taking, uh, looking for one open source solution that will less do HTTP uh, is what led to this. So curl uh, is a command line tool uh, that's uh, been around for over 15 years now. It lets you do both uploads and downloads. Uh, it's a less version, uh, it's less famous uh, um, equivalent to wget. Uh, but it's actually more capable than wget in uh, uh, many ways. Um, and as you can see, it supports quite a few transfer mechanisms, including secure ones. Uh, HTTP and FTP are the, are the two big ones. Uh, but uh, it'll do LDAP, uh, it'll send and receive email, uh, and so on and so on. It's also compatible with both IPv4 and IPv6, and it'll do proxies uh, and uh, deal with complex network topologies. Um, and the um, URL for the uh, open source project, which is actually in, uh, hosted in Sweden, is down there on screen. So the question is whether it has support for uh, an actual network file system uh, protocol, and the answer is no. It's uh, it's really intended to transfer files. But people have used SFTP that way with wrapper around it. Yeah. And, and so and the uh, the comment is that uh, you uh, you can write uh, there are some wrappers around this to actually make uh, network file systems available. So curl is the command line tool and it actually relies on a library that's called libcurl. Uh, and the cool thing about this library is that it is extremely portable. Uh, it runs on 30 plus operating systems uh, from the, the tiny embedded ones to the, uh, to the giant server ones. Uh, HPUX actually is one of the uh, uh, OSs that, uh, that uses this. Um, it's quite capable. It's able to do both blocking and non-blocking transfers, so you don't have to sit there and wait for the transfer to complete. You can go and do something else while uh, the transfer, transfer is going on. Um, as you'll see, it is very easy to use. Uh, it is quite fast. Uh, if you hand-tune your HTTP driver, you can be better than, uh, than the curl. But really, for something that you get off the shelf, it is very capable. Um, it doesn't do everything on its own. Uh, and in particular, for things like TLS support, you can plug in a number of third-party libraries to enable that. 
It's got a very permissive uh, MIT X license, so you don't have to worry too much about reusing code, uh, copyrights, and um, that sort of problems. Uh, and uh, it has a considerable uh, user base. Uh, the website says that they get over a million downloads of the library per year. So that makes it a very, very good uh, starting point to do uh, network transfers from uh, UEFI. Uh, but th this is an actual uh, sample uh, from the, uh, from the, uh, the curl uh, website. Uh, and this is all you need to do uh, a, a complete transfer over HTTP. Um, so there, uh, there's one function co called curl easy init to do the uh, to do the setup. Uh, one to set options. One to do the actual transfer. And this is showing a blocking equivalent. So there a blocking version. So uh, there's no compli uh, complications from doing something else at the same time. Uh, and then uh, handling of errors if necessary and clean up. So this all fits, all fits within uh, one screen on PowerPoint at a somewhat reasonable font size. The port for UFI really, that's uh, three lines, that's all it takes. So you, you take curl, you, well you take libcurl, you compile it, you stick it on top of libsocket and libc, which are uh, two libraries that are available in, I think it's app package. Uh, they're the libraries that give you uh, compatibility with BSD sockets and the standard C library. They're not the libraries you would typically use if you uh, build a, a UEFI driver that you're going to stick inside your firmware. But for an application, especially a ported application, that's a very common use case. And the, uh, the app package that hosts these libraries already has a number of other uh, standard C applications. Uh, so you can see other examples of that if you're not familiar with the uh, process already. And here's what the INF file looks like. One interesting point is that it's using the uh, shell C entry lib uh, entry point uh, so that there's a main function uh, inside your, your application. So it's, uh, it's a standard C style, not UEFI style. Uh, but you're, you're still able to, to call your uh, UEFI protocols and whatnot if you need to do that. Uh, but as long as you stay within the uh, uh, standard C uh, function set, um, then uh, adding libcurl on top of that is, uh, is almost transparent. There's uh, one library called to curl lib in library classes. And that's pretty much uh, the only thing that's uh, vaguely interesting in the INF file. The, the rest is all uh, boilerplate. So here's what the source looks like after you've ported it to UEFI. Uh, you should be able to notice at this point that this is exactly the same source as two slides ago. And that's the point. As long as you're doing standard C functions and libcurl functions, your port, your application port is completely transparent. There's not a single line that you need to change. <laughs> Of course, the day that you want to use data view UEFI, UEFI code, uh, you have to make those calls, and uh, things are going to start looking different. Uh, compiling, I, uh, I'm not going to show the actual build, but uh, for this sample application, without optimizing anything, so uh, with slash od on the Microsoft compiler, uh, the binary uh, comes out to 170K on x64, so it would compress to about half that. Uh, so for less than 100K, you can, you can have an EFI application that's able to do network transfers. So in terms of uh, space cost, that's very, very reasonable. Originally, I thought I was going to uh, demo the actual live unit here, but uh, as you can see from the setup, it's somewhat cumbersome. Uh, so I actually ran the test this morning from my test suite. Uh, what you see on the left side is the uh, DHCP uh, NHP server, Th that's the one that's also pr uh, providing uh, Pixie services right now that we got uh, from uh, Harry from Intel, so thank you. Um, there's a bunch of wires that are sneaking their way on the fourth floor going into my room, uh, making their way into my workstation on the right, um, uh, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty regular EDK2 based uh, prototype system. Although there are a bunch of wires, the, uh, the topology is uh, pretty straightforward. And this is what it looks like. 
DHCP config on the left, so I'm, uh, I'm getting my uh, IP address from that DHCP server you just saw. Doing the actual HTTP transfer on the uh, uh, middle slide, after you've uh, properly optimized your network stack for things like the uh, get time issue uh, and for uh, buffer allocation, the speeds that you get doing HTTP downloads, they should be very comparable, almost identical to the uh, 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 speeds that you get over TFTP to do Pixie downloads. Um, and the results on the right, uh, so that, uh, that's showing you the actual uh, HTML uh, page from the test server that I was using, which uh, for which you saw the uh, representation on the top uh, left slide. Uh, simple demo server, nothing uh, nothing fancy about it. I just needed something to uh, to feed me pages uh, so I could uh, uh, read the, uh, the HTML. Setting this actually took me longer to set up the cabling to uh, to be able to uh, to take the pictures uh, than it took me to uh, actually initialize the machine and do the transfers. B basic setup, very simple. Compiling the application using that library, very simple too. Um, so really, you're you're looking at uh, half an hour of effort uh, to uh, to get started with this. Uh, now, if you're trying to get into fancy territory uh, like uh, TLS support, so you can do secure uh, network transfers, uh, the good news is that libcurl, uh, as I was saying earlier, works with a whole bunch of other libraries. Uh, yes, it does open SSL, uh, and also other ones like uh, new TLS, XTLS. Uh, I think it supports like 12 to 15 different libraries today. Uh, the bad thing uh, about this, uh, which you may know about if you've uh, followed the news about OpenSSL, is that properly doing TLS transfers is difficult. Um, and you have an added difficulty if you're doing, doing this from UEFI because you will need to generate random numbers. And UEFI is a low entropy environment. So getting good random numbers is actually a very non-trivial problem to solve. So hopefully, your processor has good RNG and you trust it, and then your problem is solved. Uh, if you don't want to, if you do not want to go that route, uh, life is going to be interesting for you if you want to enable TLS transfers. So the source code. Th this is the actual source code from our library, including that uh, sample application uh, that I uploaded yesterday to SourceForge. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, everybody can get to it. Um, so the, uh, it's the standard uh, SourceForge URL on the left, and the project name is libcurl edk2, no punctuation, no dashes, no nothing. As I was saying, you should have all it takes to build uh, HTTP-capable applications with it, well, say, including the time to download, maybe 30 minutes left, uh, rather than five. So if you have time this afternoon or tomorrow morning, then by all means, go ahead, grab the code, compile it, uh, you want to modify the source URL because right now it's hard coded to uh, to an IP address within hp.com, which is not going to work terribly well from here. Uh, but that should really should be all it takes to do HTTP transfers from UEFI. So definitely <coughs> go out and try that. Uh, and I would love to hear about what kind of results you're getting. Um, and I will be monitoring the EDK2 Devil mailing list. Uh, with the actual uh, developers for the uh, for the port, uh, so we should be able to answer all of your actual implementation questions uh, on the list. And that's all I have for the main presentation. So I'm uh, open for questions now. Uh, so the question is, can you use this for web dev uh, on the client side? Yes, uh, you can. I think it is explicitly supported by libcurl. Yeah. So the question is, can this be used for remote debugging? Uh, and the answer is yes, uh, with the caveat that you, you need quite a bit of environment to be set up for this to, be, uh, for this to work. Uh, so th this is a good environment to debug uh, UEFI applications. Uh, if you're trying to debug something in Dixie, it's probably going to be too early for this to be meaningful. Uh, so the question is on which compiler to use. Uh, we've used, so we've definitely used uh, Visual Studio 2010 on x64 targets. 
Uh, in the early days of the development, we also used GCC. So I think that uh, the current uh, the, uh, the uh, package as it stands uh, would be able to support GCC. You may need to, uh, to add explicitly the compiler options in the INF file. Uh, that should be all it takes. Libcurl itself uh, works with pretty much any compiler and works with all of the processor architectures that UEFI supports and then some. If you're trying to use a different build environment than me and a di or a different uh, processor architecture and things don't work quite right, it's because we took uh, some uh, liberties uh, in the in the DSC or in the INF to make it to just make it work with Visual Studio 2010. Uh, but the ch the changes that we need to support other build environments within UFI, I, they should be pretty straightforward. There shouldn't be anything really uh, uh, weird about that. <laughs>